So why should you listen to me? Why do I matter? Um, well, uh, I am a Python expert, and I can say that because, you know, uh, GitHub tells me I am. Um, <laughs> so, you can believe me when I say that I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I've done over 300 pushes, and I have 103 projects just in Python alone. I care about it a lot. It is like my favorite toy in the world. Um, yeah, so, blah, blah, uh, Twitter and other resume grabbing things. Okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, we don't care about that. <laughs> so, in any case, I know my shit when it comes to Python, and, um, my, I'm a professor at NYU, um, I teach there, and, uh, yeah, during the school year, but now I'm taking a break and having fun. So, anyway, let's start talking about data science, enough why you should listen to me. So, here's your workflow, it's pretty simple, actually. You grab data, you process data, then you analyze it. That's how you... So we're going to be teaching, today I'm going to be teaching you how to do open source data things. Um, if you have your data already stored for you, that's not as much fun as interesting. I thought I'd pick the hardest use case. Uh, this also happens to be my research. So I work on human trafficking, specifically grabbing open source um, or like data from the internet and then processing it and turning it into actual results. I'm working with uh, police departments in various places now. And uh, yeah, we fight slavery. So if you want to talk to me about my research, totally do that after the talk. All right, let's get started. So the first library we're going to be talking about today is requests. Requests is awesome. Um, if anyone here is a Python program already, you probably know what URL Lib 2 is. It comes with Python installed. Requests wraps that and that has a whole bunch more functionality. Um, basically, you know, it just works over RESTful connection. So it interacts with the browser the way you would normally, except in an automated way. So what the hell does that mean? Well, I'm going to show you. Because, you know, talk is cheap. All right, so demo one. Uh, you guys can all see that, right? Yeah, all right, good. Um, what was I going to do first? Ah, uh, yes. This one. So it's going to do IPython notebook because it's the best. And we're going to do requests down. Requests. Okay, so um, all of this is up on GitHub um, in the same folder that is mentioned here. Um, I'm just waiting for this to boot up. Yeah, Python is a little slow, sorry about that. Um, okay, so here's some code I wrote in a second. Just wait for it, it's happening. All right, cool. So, the first thing we're gonna do is scrape uh, google.com because, you know, they don't care. Um, something to note, this is a good aside. Sometimes when you're scraping a website, if you hit it with too many requests, it's gonna time out. So, um, Google won't do that typically because they handle like trillions of requests a day, but smaller websites, so like when you're scraping, for instance, government websites around the city, you might run into request issues, um, which we'll get into later, but yeah, it's not good for demoing your code. You should run it against something um, a little bit better than that. All right, so requests. What this does is it grabs the HTML page, and then, look, there it is. There's all the HTML from google.com, and it's just that simple. Um, this is a stateful, piece of text, so I can run this as many times as I want. I can actually um, uncomment this, I think. I should still run, yeah. Because this is stateful, unlike the URL lib, which is not stateful, it actually uses a generator. A generator just means that there's no state, so every time you run it, you have to rerun it again and again. I really like this feature about requests. It makes me very happy. Um, something else you get just for free is the status code, so I know that it works. Uh, if you don't know different status codes for HTTP, I highly recommend you learn them if you're going to be scraping any open data sources. 200 means okay, 404 means bad. Um, the other ones you can figure out on your own. Uh, another thing you get is the encoding type. So if it's not in ASCII, then it'll tell you. How wonderful is that? Uh, you can close your connections whenever you want. You get the cookies. You get the headers. Um, this is all like really happening, right? So that's kind of cool. And you can tell if it's a redirect. So you can see what you're scraping and why. Uh, and you can do things in a really truly programmatic way. All right, cool. So great. We can interact with a browser sort of thing. That's awesome. But what does that really mean? Well, well, I wrote a sample web application uh, just to show you CGI HTTP server. This is a really like bare bones application. It's it's pretty silly, um, but it's going to do what we want it to. Whoops, why did I add a 5? Okay, so this web page just lets you log in um, because, man, it lets you log in. So I'm going to tell you the password is pass and the name is admin. You're going to see in a second anyway. And it just pops up a link to Google. That's great. Why do we care? Well, well, imagine you wanted data for personal reasons. Say you wanted to be able to log into some account that you have whenever you want, and you want to do this in an automated way, and you want to pull down all the data, you don't want to have to go to that website every day, right? You just run this, and look, 
what happened here is I got the same login information by hitting the server. That happened over here, even though hmm, what's the code? whatever. Um, I hit the server with my username and password. Uh, that this server that I just showed you how I logged in on um, manually. I did that in an automated way. Um, all you need to do is start up a session. You post to the page that you want to hit. You give it the payload, which is your data. So that's your username and password. The reason why username and password just work is because I named the login, like um, username and the login password fields, username and password. So for instance, let's just go back to that page for a second. Um, all right, and let's give you the source. So uh, name, username, name, password. So these are the fields that you're going to look for in the HTML page that you're trying to log into. And yeah. And then you just pass in your credentials. So you have to log in once, but then you don't have to log in again, and then you can get things in an automated way. Mm -hmm. So is this clear to everyone? I went through it pretty fast, but basically logging in, it's kind of cool. Can you post it? Oh, yeah, this is all on GitHub. Okay. And I'm gonna have in the slides, you'll 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 get all this. Um, but this is this is clear, right? I'm not. I haven't lost anyone yet. Good. Question: Is yeah, the yeah. username password kind of similar in a lot of login? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's whatever it's whatever the name is, whatever the the, the, the the like clear text field and the password field is, right? So whenever you're logging in, it's always this is this 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 will always work. Now it's uh, something to note. Um, I'm very close. This. Oh no no, I can still load it back up again. Something to note. Um, can I? Yeah. Uh, something to note that's important. You, the HTML page that you hit has to have. Um, the username password thing in it. So what you would actually do is once you log in, you copy that URL, and that's the URL you're going to hit with requests. Okay. So like oftentimes this is hashed, so you can't use this to like attack someone on the internet, but you can use it to log into your own stuff whenever you want. That's the point. This is this can't be used maliciously. Um, so that's okay. So that's the requests library. Um, they have great documentation, and I just covered a very small section of all the awesome badass things you can do with requests. Next, we're going to look at LXML, which is another really fun library. So once you have your HTML and it's unstructured, how do you structure it? Well, LXML is going to take care of all that for you because it's awesome and amazing and wonderful. Mm -hmm. So let's load that demo and show you how that works. LXML. OK, time for some more magic. So this first thing, all I'm doing, really simple, I'm just grabbing all the links on Google.com. Um, and with, let's see how many lines this is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 lines, I'm able to successfully get all the links. I think that's pretty good. Um, so let's just check that out, see what happens. Oh look, I got all the links. Hooray! Um, and all I had to do was just double slash and then the tag that I wanted, and then it gets me all the information that I care about. So um, this is the text content. For the page, I don't know why I care about that. And then this is the values. Um, oh, okay, I did two things. So, right, the other thing you can do is you can also get the link, link text. Uh, let me actually, hmm, let me actually show you that um, as well because I did it. So why not, right? Print link text. Yeah. So this gives me what these links correspond to. So you not only get the uh, the the links that you're going to, you can get the semantic meaning of those links within the context of the web page. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, hooray! We did something kind of basic still, but mm -hmm. whatever. We're gonna get more advanced, don't worry. Um, so this is sort of like a more full-blown thing um, and an actual instance of like using data. I'm not gonna go or grabbing data from the internet in a reasonable way. I'm not gonna go through everything that's written here. Um, there's a lot of error checking that's going on, but it's basically the same thing. So we're just gonna go to this URL real quick and see what I'm pulling. And then I'm gonna run the code and you're gonna be like, oh my god, magic. <laughs> so, this is a table of values and data. But hey look, it's stored in a really terrible way. Do you wanna manually input all of this into a CSV? I certainly don't. Well, <laughs> that's what Python is for. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> you don't say. I do, in fact. All right, I'm talking to myself, this has gotten weird. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, let's, yeah, 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 yeah. all right, so let's pull up the CSV, so it's called battingyanks.csv, um, I just ran it, so whatever was there, which was probably a lie, is no longer a lie, so this is really me trusting my own code now, um, let me just find it in my documents, where is it, 
Uh, oh, I'm in darkness right here. So, there, intro to munching. Man, man, man. Sorry, I'm slow. It's early and tired, whatever. Okay, so, hey, look, uh, it worked, and it worked correctly, and I got all the data that I wanted. Isn't that magical? Now, whenever the city just has data, but it's in a stupid HTML <laughs> format, and you don't have it available to you, and whatever you want, okay, just use Python. Uh, I don't know how many lines this is. It's like less than 100, though. Let me think. Let me, just, let me look at this. Um, all this code is up, so you can check it out to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, eh. It's less than 50 lines. In less than 50 lines, I completely got the data source that I wanted. Um, and the thing is, I could run this against any team in the baseball league and it would work because most of these pages are standardized. What so, about big data? Sorry? What about big data? Uh, I'm gonna cover that a little bit later. This, Sorry, this is like intro to why Python is awesome. But yeah, we can talk about it after in detail. Okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Cool. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do scale things. Um, uh, where I work, we all right. So I'll field the question for a second. Where we work, we process around 100,000 records on average per day. Uh, that's not like huge data. That's not like terabytes or whatever. But we're still a relatively small company. Um, but we do that with Python. That's the stack we use. Uh, so in fact, um, Scikit-Learn, which is something I'm going to hopefully talk about later. So I mean, there's time left in the the demo. Um, in Scikit-Learn, you get access to arrays that are as efficient as C arrays. In some cases, they're more efficient, so you can actually process data very, very, very quickly. Um, hopefully, I'll get to pandas. We'll see about time. That's why I'm talking fast, because I have a lot to show you. Um, all. So, okay, cool. So we talked about munging um, and LXML and requests. Let's move on. Time for something different. Um, let's, all right, next slide. Uh, yes, this keeps me focused. All right. Now we're going to talk about the wonderful magical text blob. It is my favorite toy um, in the world. So where did I put this? I put it in now. I think. All right. Uh, so NLPY is a library I'm writing um, right now. Um, uh, so okay. Actually, I'm going to show you this first. So the first thing I want to do is introduce you guys to natural language processing, and then we're going to go through uh, text blob, which is a total badass like implementation of this that sits on top of NLTK, which I think is probably the fastest Python, like high level machine learning thing with natural language processing you can do. So, what is NLP? Um, and RAM. NLP, at a very high level, is just about taking text in and processing it. So, what this library does that I wrote um, at a very high level is, uh, this is actually not instructive, I should probably just talk through it. Okay, so um, what this does at a high level is it takes some text and then it gives you some analysis. So n-gram analysis is the most simplistic thing you can do. It tells you how similar two authors are. So we're going to run this code right now. Uh, so example, oh, I should show you example code um, before we run through it. All right, so I have two pieces of text. They're both wrapped with my n-gram library. Um, and one of them is like happy and good, and the other one is like angry at the world. Uh, uh, please don't mind the text. Uh, I'm just trying to prove a point that's not representing any feelings or anything. Um, anyway, so uh, for one example, we see that these two running samples are about 46% similar in terms of word choice, and their phrasing is about 6.8% similar. So you can tell whether or not the writers were the same just based on this n-gram analysis. You can look up the formal definition and how n-grams really work um, on your own time. It's super intuitive. Or you can download my library and then use my library for whatever you want. Um, but yeah. Uh, OK, so that's that. And now we're going to talk about uh, text blob, which is a little bit more advanced. Classify. So, here I am not using my ngram library, even though I imported it, I was thinking about something. But, in any case, uh, so, I apologize for those who are squeamish in the world, in the room, um, but the, the point I'm making with these two phrases is, imagine you have a blogging uh, platform, or, or, yeah, 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 and you allow people to leave comments. Let's say you don't want to allow um, the trollers to post horrible things to each other on your site. Well, using <laughs> a text blob and a, a naive Bayesian classifier, which classifies text semantically, um, well, semantically, sort of, uh, you can, you know, sort of figure out 
um, whether or not it's text you want to allow by having similar text in your training data set. So all I did here, it's really simple actually, um, let me just scroll up a little bit, is I have my data store in a TXT file, so this is positive comments, things we want to allow, and negative comments, things we want to disallow. I, I load them into memory into arrays. Um, I create my training sets, I load part of it into tests to make sure that my model actually works, and then I just run naive Bayesian classifier on the train data, um, which I loaded into memory, and now we're going to see that. This is going to take a second, and what it's going to do is classify these two pieces of text as positive and negative, and look, there it is, magic. Uh, so this should be allowed, and this shouldn't, and this model works with 98% accuracy, which is pretty damn good. You can get to 100%. Um, it's totally possible. Well, pretty close. So how large is your training set? Uh, my training set is... I don't remember. I think it's like... You want on average between 300 and... So it depends how much this. It's great if you're dealing with like less than 140 characters or something. Um, so Twitter comments, for instance, or comments on a blog thing, you could probably get away with that. For longer pieces of text, um, you may want to do some n-gram thing. Uh, where you take like sentence by sentence and then classify each one. Um, but the more accurate, the more data you have, the more accurate your model is going to be. But that also means more noise, so you have to tune your data appropriately. So that's actually really important. Um, so how, yeah, how the data actually appears to uh, for your so so this yeah the classifier essentially you know takes your data and then it creates your model according to the specifications in your data. Um, yeah. All right. All right. Um, it's a complicated question. I don't have time for it now. Say my my data set's three hundred because it's it points to something larger. But yeah, um, sorry that was unclear. Um, the important point is mine are three hundred each, but you can get as deep as you want. Okay. All right. I'm moving on now. What Did you recommend a data set? Um, yeah. So um, I think brown. So it depends what you're trying to do. Uh, actually, I can't recommend a data set in general. Sentiment analysis. Yeah, for sentiment analysis. Uh, you don't need a data set. You can just use the corpus built into NLTK, which comes with XBlob. Um, if you're trying to do... So, I mean, I think I can just show you this on the fly. Um, from text... Blog, you want to say? Import... Polarity? I think that's a thing. And it's not a thing. Alright, I don't remember... Uh, import text blob. Um, I'm getting a bit far afield, but... All right, there's a, whatever, there's a sentiments, oh, yeah, sentiments. So there's a sentiment analyzer built into text blob, and you can just make use of this, it, it'll give you a pretty good polarity score. I mean, I use it in my personal research, so that's how much I trust it. Um, okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you guys within the grepping, oof, something I was working on this morning, um, where is it? Oh no, lost it. Uh, where it is pulling it all together? Is it in here? It must be. Alright, I've forgotten where I put this. This is a problem. Um, hold on, give me like one second just to think. Mark 4, is it in Trinity Munching? I might have put it back in this. Alright, I've forgotten where I put one of my demos. That's not good. Um, okay, whatever. I'm going to switch gears and talk about something else. So, check your history. Uh, <laughs> how do I do that? It must be a Python. History? Okay. Um, pipe? Grab back. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Grab, uh, what should I look for, though? Like, I Demo know. file name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, requests. Classify? No, I did that one. I'm not sure where it is. It's somewhere. Um, alright, so, doesn't matter. Alright, alright. Let me just show you something else. I've made a lot of stuff for this. Too much, in fact. I've also written you, um, something, if you want to do high-level, just grepping of texts and PDFs and pictures or something from a website, I wrote you three methods and basically a library that does all of it for you at high level. So all you need to do is pass in the base URL, and then you tell it how many pages, how many, the depth of the pages that you want to grab. So treat any um, start page as like your root, and then everything after that is like um, a tree. So like every link it follows will be one depth below. And you don't really need to know Python at all. Um, so I think I wrote something for this, which is up here. 
Let me see if I can find it. I think it might be an intro. Yeah, it's an intro. So we're going to grab all the PDFs from I chose uh, the Department of Education website, and we're going to go depth two. Um, you can also grab the images and all the links, but this tends to create the bottleneck that I was talking about before. So we're not actually going to run that code, but we should be able to get all the PDFs just fine. And this is also on GitHub. You can download it and all that goodness. Yep. So here's all the PDFs, depth two. Um, there's only one, which is a little depressing, but yeah, um, we can try depth three. I won't go past that because then I think we will run into issues still. But yeah, so you can get all the PDFs on every page. Uh, this is pretty good, I think, when you're scraping government websites because maybe there's a lot of forms that you might want to grab for one of your projects. Um, but yeah, these are all pretty decent. Um, if you run into like issues where you're hitting the maximum number of requests that you can send, I recommend um, just doing some sort of like uh, time.sleep thing in Python. Uh, so yeah, this is a bunch of PDFs. Oh look, we got like a billion. Uh, wow, way too many. All right, whatever. Okay, so that's the thing. Um, cool, so I wrote all that stuff for you. That's all done. All right, I'm gonna give this one more second. If I can't find it then, oh, grab analyze. Of course I would name it that, because I'm brilliant. Okay, so <laughs> now I can show you the last thing. This is this is this is the thing that takes the cake. Uh, I'm so special sometimes. I'm sorry, friends. <laughs> All right. So right now, what we're gonna do? Um, what is this? Is it in here? It's not in here. Okay. Is it just? It's just in the grab analyze thing. All right. Whatever. All right. I didn't want the latency of that. So eh, let's close this, and then I'll show you that. Go away. Also go away. All right. So what this does um, is it goes to a popular website, say Backpage. I would use Craigslist, but they stopped me from letting me scrape them because I scraped them too much. <laughs> and, but basically, this is going to scrape all the classes available in Manhattan that are posted on Backpage, and it's going to determine, determine for me uh, because I'm awesome and because I'm using TextBlob, whether or not they're for English speakers or for Spanish speakers. <laughs> Crazy, you say? <laughs> Why would you care about that? Well, I mean, I hope it's self self right? Um, so yeah, so uh, we're going to write to two files, specifically, um, which the files? EnglishLinks.txt and SpanishLinks.txt, and it's going to tell me which ones are in English and which are in Spanish, and then maybe I do some cool businessy thing with it. like. I don't know, maybe I want a website that will tell me where, like, let's say you're a native Spanish speaker. Where are all the classes for Spanish speakers? Um, I don't know, so this will tell you that. It depends on what your business model is. Um, so this is going to run, it's going to take a minute. Uh, I can't show you the results because I ran it. Whatever, I ran it before. And it's worse. Um, but yeah, so uh, some things I'll discuss in here. I'm not doing anything new, I'm just using the things we've already done. Um, I had an English word list, this comes from some free book that's part of public domain, and then I just basically went through and looked for a bunch of text in Spanish. It's actually not super easy if you use uh, English versions of Google, <laughs> so I had to tweak that for a bit. Um, this page thing loops through all the pages because Backpage uses a very standard way to loop through pages, so when you do question mark page equals, it goes to the page two, page three, etc. So that's why I have like this integer thing. Um, and all I'm using is request, LXML, and text blob, and the naive basin classifier that we already talked about. Mm -hmm. So this is taking a bit of time, which makes me really sad. Um, come on, hurry up. Boo, all right, fine, I'll come back to that. Hopefully it works. Um, all right, cool, so I showed you that stuff. All right, the last thing we're gonna cover is pandas. Um, actually, I'm going to take a minute and ask, let, ask if anyone has any questions, just because I've been going pretty fast-paced. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the LXML library. Yeah. Have you tried out Beautiful Soup? Beautiful Soup sucks compared to LXML. <laughs> XPath is way better. Seriously. It just is. Um, let me just show you... Actually, I don't even need that. XPath is general. It's not Python-specific. Um, so... Yes, I like W3 schools. Um, so you can get any classifier at any level. Actually, I have a good example too. But um, you do slash slash, and then the tag name, or slash slash the tag name, and then a brackets, and then 
an add symbol in the attribute, and then what the attribute equals, and that'll just give it to you. It doesn't matter uh, what level of the document it's in. With Beautiful Soup, you need to specify all that, which sucks. Um, let me actually pull back and show you something that I ran into that you could not do easily in Beautiful Soup that I did very easily. Why isn't it letting me? Um, which one was it? I think it was in the baseball thing. Yeah, it was in the baseball thing. Where was the baseball thing? Was that in? That was in LXML, right? Notebook. Uh, LXML. All right. So all I had to do to get this to work was I specified table and then at class small. I didn't have to specify any of the div tags that this lives in. I didn't have to specify any of the other attributes that are attached to this table. All I had to do was give it one attribute and because it was unique to that to HTML, it knew. And the slash slash means it checks arbitrary like depth within to the HTML, which is just, it's so much cleaner, it's so much stronger. Yes, you have to do post-processing, which is a little bit more of a pain in the ass, but I think you can handle it. Um, I know you can specifically, but other people can. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So let's see if this is finished yet. It's not done. Why are you thinking? Um, it usually doesn't take this long. I think I might have added more text for clarity purposes. Whatever. Doesn't matter. We're moving on. Um, that'll finish when it finishes. Um, so something I should mention, a lot of machine learning jobs, especially when you're running on a one core, are pretty pretty slow. Um, you're going to want to get server space somewhere. AWS is great. Um, uh, you can throw any number of resources that you know you rent them when you need them. Alright, so let's do pandas and then I'll check back in with that. If that's not done, then you'll just have to take my word for it that it worked, but it does. And you can try this out at home and it should work. My computer sucks because it's a virtualized environment. Alright, this will be the last thing and then I'll just take questions. So, um, where is this? Ah, uh, the famous problem I have with that. Put in the No. Alright. I don't remember where the pandas stuff is. I apologize for Can you write X pandas? Oh, it's in hardcore. Sorry, what? Uh, yeah, so, um, IPython notebook. Pandas. Pandas. Finish. I don't know why, but whatever. Um, so, Pandas is awesome. Uh, you can do things. Pandas is essentially magic. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, you can do things. So this is uh, from this is from the Kaggle Titanic uh, thing. I don't know. There's like a Kaggle challenge on Titanic and figuring out why people survived and whether there was like any correlation there or anything. So. Um, we downloaded their data set, so assuming you have your data set already, um, and you name some features on it, so like for instance data.sex, we know that these people are male, and in fact, let's just like, I don't know how to, I'll have to comment this out, but just give me one second to comment this out. Um, so, and then we'll look at our features, and we'll be done. Alright, because I know I'm killing everyone. So. We get the name, the sex, the age, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but yeah, you can play with the data and create new data sets in the most obvious way possible. You just say, I want all the males. Everything that's data about sex equals male, or I want all the females. And that just works. How awesome is that? That's like the greatest thing ever, I think. Um, so, okay, so that ran. Um, so what this does is it tells me how many women and men survive. So let's figure that out. Um, so, 74% of the women survived. And I just found that out. I didn't have to do any like graphical things. I didn't have to really inspect my data in any reasonable way. Anyone could come in and read this and it would just automatically make sense to them, I think. And only 18% of the men survived. Huh, we just figured out something interesting and actionable about our data. And we did basically no work. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can see all the columns that you have available, so you can loop through them and then partition them out into individual columns if you want to do some single dimensional analysis stuff. And you can reference just things by age. So yeah, we just have all of that. It's really pretty. Um, and you can index into things like you the right. Now we're gonna get a cross section. This is just the first person that was in the mail they are in the data set and he happens to be male. Um, and it turns out he did not survive. That's what zero means. 
Um, so that's sad. Oh, and now we're just, you know, we're just gonna plot our stuff because we can just do that really easily. Um, okay, and there's an Instagram for you. And you can do a whole bunch more magic. The docs are pretty good for these libraries. Alright, let's come back to the thing that we were baking in the oven and see if that finished. It did! Oh my god! I'm so happy! Alright, so let's do English text. Oh no, English links. That looks like a whole bunch of English to me. Let's check out <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> hey look! That's Spanish! So, in conclusion, uh, machine learning and NLP and data analysis is super easy in Python. It's high level, it's fast most of the time, it's efficient. Uh, that's all the stuff I have 